One of the most consistent complaints I've seen about Elgato gear has been price. And while for specific pieces of gear, I'm happy to debate that all day long as most competing products that do exactly what Elgato offers tend to be a lot more expensive. Elgato said bet and decided to release a whole pile of budget gear today. So we're gonna check it out. This is the first time I'm seeing it too. It's always exciting when we get a whole bunch of gear all at once. So I just wanna dive in. Just start cracking into it. We can probably dive in deeper into content as we get through it, but we will have some reviews. We'll take it into the studio, you know, check out some of this in this video too. But it's budget gear, so you know, you gotta keep expectations in check. This is not budget gear. This is for a backing track project, so backingtrack.gg. This is the Neo line of products, which is a weird name, like product category, but hey, I'm here for it. We've got Keylight Neo, and I've got two of those. I've got one of those. And then here we have the Wave Neo. So we have a budget microphone offering, which is pretty crazy to imagine given that the Wave microphone was only 99 bucks, which is as budget as it gets for like a really, really, really good microphone like it was, so that's pretty crazy. A Stream Deck Neo, so first new Stream Deck in three years, I wanna say. I think it was 2021 when we got the Mark IIs. Impressive. There will be a face cam Neo as well, but the shipment for that got delayed. It's coming at the end of quarter two as they're gonna continue fine tuning it, I think based on some stuff they learned from face cam Mark II as well. So right now we're just taking a look at the key light Neos, which I guess we will put together with our face cam Mark II. And I've got two of those. Um, we've got a microphone and a stream deck. So taking a look at the light, it is a really strange design, if I'm being completely honest. So this is still, well, just destroyed that box. How are you supposed to, oh, it has a pull tab. It has a really weird design. It kind of looks like those daylight lamps. We used to have a couple of those, which were just 5,600 Kelvin uh, lights. Very interesting. So you've got buttons to change brightness, potentially or maybe that is a power button. So you got controls all on the front, which is kind of nice. USB-C power just kind of goes in the back so you don't need the specific power adapters anymore, which was a big complaint I had about the original face, uh, original key lights. And then a single quarter 20 mount here, which I guess doesn't matter that it's not on all four sides because realistically it's a square. So wherever you want to mount it, you can just mount it. Uh, Do we get anything else in this rather strange box? Oh, that's neat. They they developed a cable reel that you can pop right into the back of it to keep your cable secure. A braided USB cable for USB Type-C as well as an extension. Uh, and these are nice soft braided, which is pretty neat to see. The cables are still labeled for the speeds that they're rated for, which is pretty impressive given that they're not USB 3 speeds. Like you'd think they wouldn't want to advertise that, but it's USB 2, 480 megabits per second, which is pretty nice to see here. So you've got extensions for that. You also have, oh wow, this is like the mounts for their webcams. They've just adapted it for the light, so you can put it right on top of your monitor. That is pretty slick. And it's light enough that I would honestly trust the weight to support that, or like to be supported here. So that's pretty slick. We'll probably get a, like a little demo setup going here. Like it all feels like new territory for Elgato. It's not just budget products, but like they're trying to do something different with this, which is kind of neat. We have Stream Deck Neo as well. Similar pull tab style boxes. I appreciate that it's all this like recyclable cardboard boxes. All right, pre-attached cable, not a big fan of that. This is a very goofy design. It's got a couple like indicator lights and maybe a touch bar here and then eight buttons. So bigger than the Stream Deck Mini which is interesting. Built-in stand, of course. Got two different heights you can put it at. And then a pre-attached cable. As much as I like what they have done with this, I feel like I would have preferred to stick with the similar idea to the key light and that a detachable USB-C cable, and it is USB-C, still labeled, and then a quarter 20 mount. Like, I would have preferred the exact same setup where you got a quarter 20 mount on the back and the bottom, or at least on the back, and then one of these included because you could use this as a desk stand. It does not have to be a monitor stand. So I would have preferred that. I don't know why they're allergic to putting quarter 20 mounts on the stream decks. We have been asking for this for years at this point. Ugh. All right, lastly, we've got the Wave Neo. 
a budget microphone to be more budget than their existing budget microphone offer. <laughs> like it would have made sense. Like they already did the wave one and the wave three and then they got rid of the wave one because it was redundant and no one, like they, they were able to just make the three cheaper. All right, we've got some thread mounts in there. Pretty basic microphone setup here. Looks kind of like those mini uh, Razer mics and stuff I reviewed a while back. It has a mic arm attached to it, kind of like the SM7B. And then you have an extension arm you could attach to it with a little cable clip and then a basic USB-C cable to clip into the back. Let's go I'll hook this up and see how it sounds and looks, I guess. All right, I've built a demonstration streaming setup here using my iPad Pro as the capture setup with Elgato's capture app. We've got the Facecam Mark II in place of the Facecam Neo for now. The Facecam Neo is still 1080p60. It has autofocus. It's gonna be a little bit lower quality than the Facecam Mark II, I think, but for now it's fine. We've got the two key light Neos set up. Uh, the face cam and the one of the key lights is on the monitor mount on the monitor I have set up here. But then the other one is on the key, the Elgato stand mini that originally I wasn't a big fan of. But at this point, I kind of dig. And then, of course, I've got the microphone here. Despite the SM7B style look and mount to the microphone, it is supposed to face you. The capsule is a standard condenser capsule that faces you like this with a pop filter sitting around it. And there is a capacitive mute button that you don't touch on the front, and I'll show my clip from my other version of the video where I recorded it with the microphone in the wrong spot, showing that mute button. I'm not actually touching it for that to happen. Like, you just have to get really close to it. Which is pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that on a microphone, so that's pretty nice. Overall, everything seems to work pretty well. The microphone is kind of cute. Got little cable management channels. It's got a headphone jack on the back, so you can pick up your system sound routed through it as well. It gives you access to Wave Link, so you could run audio processing and multi-channel mixing and all of that, which is pretty nice. The face cam looks like it'll be pretty neat when it's set up. The lights are nice. I love the physical controls. You get to just reach up. Turn them off and on, adjust the settings right here in front of you, which is great. They're a little less soft. Again, they are kind of resembling just like standard lamps. They're a little less soft than the standard key lights, but I do think one of these will replace my standard key light over there in my main desk setup because I don't think I need that full light at this point. Obviously, you don't, if you don't have glasses, the, the circles that appear from the lights are not as big of a deal. Something important to note about the lights is you, can, you have full controls, as I mentioned, to change the brightness and the color. You can also pair it over Wi-Fi or USB for the first time to control an Elgato control center from your computer or whatever, which is really slick. I'm pretty stoked. It's a, it's a nice little cute setup for your money. And I think the value here is huge. I think that's something that Elgato really does well is that whenever they're building the bougie products, they are striving to provide a solution that may be a little expensive, but solves a lot of problems that you don't need the hacky budget workarounds for that people always bring up is the cheaper way. But then when they make a budget product, like the value is there. And I think that's going to be the case here. We're going to do a quick microphone comparison between the... Uh, Wave Neo and the original Wave to see if there's much of a sound difference. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. And again, I forgot to mention there was a little stand base for the microphone in the box, so you can do whatever height you want. I would recommend at some point picking up Elgato's Wave Arms so you can mount it to a microphone arm at some point, but that costs a lot more, so... It's nice that they include this out of the box. The Stream Deck is really cute. Again, it's got eight buttons, which is better than the Stream Deck Mini, and it has two, the two little capacitive buttons on the sides are page flipper buttons, so you don't need to dedicate buttons for that. So that actually extends the usability a lot. And then you have a little display bar at the bottom that can show system time and things like that. And I imagine with the plug-in ecosystem and everything that we're gonna see some cool functionality added to it soon. And it comes with a lot of built-in stuff in the baked-in profile out of the box, which is really nice to see. It is a great starting point for basically all beginners. There is another product that I did not receive with this bundle that we will just review mostly separately, and that is the Game Capture Neo, which is a standard last generation capture card. We're talking 4K60 HDR pass through, 1080p60 capture. Super basic, but it hasn't arrived yet. We'll get it its own video once it's ready, just because we go hardcore with capture cards. 
Overall, I think for a collection like the Elgato Neo collection, if a beginner is looking to get into streaming with something that's accessible, easy to use, and affordable, the Elgato Neo setup is definitely a compelling option. It's got everything you need. Everything is super easy to use. Like I said, really compelling. But individual product pricing, I'm not sure actually really hits the mark for budget. And I think it kind of reveals, given that they set out to absolutely make the you know cheapo products that they could compared to the higher end flagships that they run, I think it kind of shows how not expensive Elgato stuff actually is in the long run. Because the, the pricing is perhaps not as cheap as many of you would be expecting. Uh, everything except for the capture card is under $100 or, $100 or less. Uh, we've got the Stream Deck Neo and the Face Cam Neo are $99.99 each. So $100 bucks each. Uh, and that is reasonable. I think it's a pretty good price. And I think the Stream Deck Neo is a much more compelling option than the Stream Deck Mini. And I think for a lot of people, a lot more compelling than even just the normal Stream Deck uh, these days. But it's only like 20 or 30 bucks cheaper than you can easily get a normal Stream Deck for. So in terms of like a budget offering, it's not that much cheaper. And the same thing with the Face Cam. It's only like 20 or 30 bucks cheaper than the Face Cam Mark II. And obviously we haven't looked at it yet, but if it's going to be a downgrade from that, it would generally be worth just saving up and getting that. So we'll we'll see how it goes, but it starts to create some confusion there. Now, the the key lights, each of them are $89.99 each, which is a pretty good price for the quality of light you're getting, I think, especially with the network syncing and all of that ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. I think it's compelling. I think that is a solid price. Then the microphone, the, the, the Wave Neo, $89.99. You can almost always get the Wave 3 microphone for $99, $10 more. Now, I think this might make the, 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 the Wave 3 a little redundant because this comes with the Elgato Wave Link software. It comes with all the audio processing and multi-channel and stuff. You don't have the physical controls for switching channels or whatever, but you don't really need that on here. And so I'm worried that this either squeezes out the original products in terms of relevance or it becomes confusing for the user which they should buy because the prices aren't that much cheaper. Like 10 bucks difference for the whole fancy Lewitt design capsule versus the budget microphone. I think they've put themselves in, a, themselves in an awkward position. And then the game capture, which again we don't have yet, is a last generation basic... I mean it's the same specs as like your... HD60S or S+, Plus, whichever one, you know, the, uh, we, we've had years of 4K60 pass through 1080p60 capture cards at this point that can all be had for around this price, and they want 120 bucks for it. You could get the EVGA XR1 Lite for like 60 bucks at many points. Now Nowadays, it's like 90, but still. And yes, it's been out a while, and I'm always the one to advocate, like, you can't fully compare pricing of products that have been out for a while and gotten cheaper as a real result versus brand new products. But you see where the awkwardness comes in of, I don't know that they went budget enough. These are really cool products. And I think they've taken all the lessons that they've learned from developing products in all these different categories and made one collection that has all of those lessons applied. And I think there is a lot of cool stuff here. And I think this will inform better decisions on upgraded versions of these products later. But I'm not sure how budget this really is. I... I I think budget is the wrong angle, and perhaps that's my bad for coming at it from it, but that's kind of how I was introduced to it was, hey, this is our more beginner-friendly budget product line, and I think we're more looking at, here is a collection of just a full streamer's kit you can get all at once that is compelling, but you still, you got to pay almost as much as you would for your the rest of the kit you were going to buy anyway. So I think they've done a great job, like I said, and dumbing it down and making it super accessible and making a kit that I can strongly recommend everyone get just kind of all at once. Assuming the webcam is okay, assuming the capture card is okay, we haven't looked at them yet, but based on everything we've seen here, great stuff. I just, I was hoping for it to be a little bit cheaper. Product links to everything as they become available will be in the description below, and we will get out videos on the webcam and the capture card as they become available. If you missed out on recent streaming gear, go check out my video on the Facecam Mark II, as it's a pretty nice upgrade compared to the original IMO, and... I just dropped a video on a new Lewitt microphone that has some pretty crazy technology in it. Go check out that video as well, and remember to be kind. Rewind.